So what is a Gaussian distribution? Well, it's the common bell-shaped curve, sometimes often called bell-shaped curve, because this probability density function looks like the shape of a cross-section of a bell. And here's the equation for the probability density function, and the mu is a variable and the sigma is a variable, and it turns out that mu is the mean of this probability density. And sigma is the standard deviation. So sigma squared is the variance. And that indicates the width of the bell. So these are the two parameters which change the shape of this bell. It, if you change mu, you can move it up and down. And if you change sigma, you can make it wider or narrower. And it is a probability density function. And so what does that mean? Well, um, we've got video on the channel on what is a PDF. So I'd encourage you to check that out if you're not sure. But this is the value that is plotted. So that's the little x on this axis here. And this is a function, which little p means it's a probability density function of the random variable capital X. So that's what we're plotting here. Um, Okay, so this is the Gaussian distribution. So why is this so famous? Well, I just want to point out a few things uh, about it. Well, one thing is that it's often used for gen very general sort of statistical analysis of things, but actually it actually rarely exactly applies. So for example, you might have heard of it for scaling of marks, and often students' marks are said to be scaled according to the bell curve or according to the Gaussian distribution. Well, what that means is uh, we've observed that students tend to get marks in a, in, a, in a class. If you did a histogram of their marks, they tend to have a shape of a bell in terms of a small number of people get high marks, a small number of people get low marks, and most people get marks in the middle. But the Gaussian is not the only curve, the only probability density function that has the shape of a bell. So others could be used. Uh, it also point out that it's not actually the, the exact uh, function to use in this case, uh, because this represents a random variable that can take continuous values. So the value of x could be any single value uh, here with infinite precision. Um, whereas the marks that you get in an in a exam or something are often integer marks. You either get 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 100, for example. And so those are discrete. So that random variable is a discrete random variable. And so it's not exactly the case that it has a Gaussian shape. Another aspect of it is not just that it's continuous, so it doesn't apply to anything that's discrete, but also it, it goes to infinity. So this uh, this Density function says that there are some values with a small, small, smaller probability that are very, very large, and some that are very, very large negative values. So if you're looking at other parameters, such as maybe people's height of a population or the age of people uh, in uh, various demographics, and you're looking at all these statistics of, of things that you measure, uh, often those things are positive. People's ages are positive, uh, people's shoe sizes are positive, people's heights are positive. And so even though those variables, those random variables, would have a generally speaking bell shape to their distribution, uh, they're not going to be exactly the Gaussian. So why is it that the Gaussian is used? Well, there's a thing called the central limit theorem. And so I'd encourage you to have a look at the central limit theorem. We've got a video of that on the uh, channel. And this says that any number of random variables, if they have the same distribution in each one of them, and you add them up, uh, then the overall distribution will be a Gaussian shape, irrespective of the individual distributions. And so there's, a, there's information on that on that channel, so uh, on that video. So I encourage you to have a look at that. And one important thing, uh, just finally, is that if you have two random variables, and, and I should say, therefore, the example I give there is noise in digital communication systems, where there's uh, electronics that, ha that have electrons in them, obviously, and those electrons heat up. And the value that you receive from those electrons that are moving in random ways is noise. Uh, and so that those electrons can be moving uh, in all the sorts of different directions, positive and negative, uh, and therefore they do have a Gaussian distribution. Uh, and 
importantly, if you add two random variables, each of which has a Gaussian distribution, then the resulting random variable is also Gaussian. And this is an important thing for uh, communication systems. So if you have multiple amplifiers in your system or multiple sources of noise, uh, when they add, as they do in, in, uh, in, the, in your system, uh, by the time you receive them and sample them, you will still have a Gaussian distribution to the noise. And that's an important property of Gaussian distributions. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more and check out the webpage in the link below where there's a full categorized list of videos on the channel.